Welcome to the 90s. Hey from the 90s. I don't know how I got stuck here, but I did. Um, here in the 90s, we have this TV. And this TV is so cool. It's like a little cube. And it even has a VCR built into it. So I can watch my VHS tapes of my favorite TV show. My favorite TV show is Friends. And so many of my friends have their hair cut like Rachel. They even call it the Rachel. It's so popular. But me, I like these I like these things a little bit more because they're so cute little buns and they look like one of my favorite groups, the Spice Girls. <laughs> anyway, um, they just invented this Nintendo 64 and I get to play my favorite game, Mario Kart 64. And you play this and it's so cool because these cords that are on my joystick are really um, long so I can sit a little farther from the TV it doesn't reach my couch but I can take this and sit down on the floor a little ways from the TV and I can play it's so fun when we have four people playing Mario Kart on this big TV it's so cool actually I would say it's rad you know <laughs> hmm let's talk about some rad 1990s entertainment You might know who Miley Cyrus is, but in the 90s, her daddy, Billy Ray Cyrus, had a huge hit called Achy Breaky Heart, and his hair, we call a mullet, and that was one of the popular hairstyles for men in the 90s. Billy Ray Cyrus's country music sound was one type of popular music in the 90s, but the 90s was also known for another genre called grunge. Grunge, sometimes referred to as the Seattle Sound, is an alternative rock genre and subculture that emerged during the 1980s in the American Pacific Northwest state of Washington, mostly in Seattle and nearby towns. But grunge music became really popular in the 1990s with groups like Pearl Jam, shown here, Stone Temple Pilots, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, and Nirvana, shown here. Grunge not only described the style of music, but it also described the style of clothing that people wore during this time. A lot of people would wear secondhand or shabby t-shirts with slogans, band logos on them, with a plaid shirt over top, and ripped or faded jeans. Lots of people wore black combat style boots like Doc Martens to finish this look. Boy bands also provided another type of musical choice during the 90s. New Kids on the Block, shown here, Boys to Men, they all performed while dancing and singing. Boy bands in sync and the Backstreet Boys all made their debut in the 1990s. Aw, these little guys aren't music, but they are a major fad of the 1990s. Beanie Babies. They were a very huge collectible item during the last half of the 90s, and they have been cited as being the world's first internet sensation in 1995. All right, let's talk about some rad 1990s lingo. My friends and I, we have special words we like to say because we think they're super cool. Like, booyah means I did it. Or chill out, calm down. Or I could even say, talk to the hands, the ears are busy. Talk to the hands, the ears are busy. Sometimes I even say a word when I agree with something that my friends say. Or if something's not true, I'd just be like, not. They were like, hey, you're gonna be a teacher one day. And I was like, not. <laughs> oh, and you know what else we say sometimes? We say, 
Oh, snap. <laughs> so fun. I love it. I love it. And, you know, when you mess up, because we all mess up, we have to say things like, my bad. So when I beat my friends, beat my friends in Mario Kart, I just say something like, my bad. Because you know what? It's not really my bad. <laughs> I'm just trying to say I'm sorry, even though I wanted to win. Oh, man. And you know what's winning? Winning is? It's the bomb. The bomb is so cool. Yes. And when something's really good, we say it's tight. It's tight, awesome. And when somebody is crazy, we say they tripping, tripping. So we have some special language here with my friends and I here in the 90s. So if you wanna chill with us, you've gotta be the bomb and say the right words, or we're gonna say, oh snap. You wanna listen to some music? We can listen to a tape. We can listen to a CD. We can listen to some of my favorite music. I love grunge music, but I also like boy bands. Those are all starting around now. So awesome. But what I really want to do is on the radio, let's listen to the news of the 90s. Let's see if I can get it. Bringing us into the 90s, George H.W. Bush served as the 41st President of the United States of America. He was a one-term president that served from 1989 to 1993. In 1990, Iraqi President Saddam Hussein ordered the invasion and occupation of neighboring country Kuwait. Alarmed by these actions, Many neighboring countries called on the United States and other Western nations to intervene. Saddam Hussein defied United Nations Security Council demands to withdraw from Kuwait by mid-January 1991, and the Persian Gulf War began with a massive U.S.-led air offensive known as Operation Desert Storm. Hurricane Andrew was a Category 5 storm that hit South Florida on August 24, 1992 with wind speeds of 165 miles per hour. The storm caused damage to South Louisiana and the Bahamas, but the brunt of its impact fell on South Florida, where about 250,000 people were left homeless. There were 26 deaths and over 25,000 homes were destroyed and many others damaged. Beginning in 1993, President Bill Clinton served as President of the United States of America until 2001. He was a two-term president that was also the second president ever to be impeached. He was tried in the Senate and found not guilty of the charges brought against him and was able to finish his second term as president. On April 19, 1995, the Oklahoma City bombing occurred when a truck packed with explosives was detonated outside the Alfred M. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, killing 168 people and leaving hundreds more injured. The blast was set off by an anti-government militia, Timothy McVeigh, who in 2001 was executed for his crimes. His co-conspirator, Terry Nichols, was sentenced to life in prison. In 1996, the United States hosted the Summer Olympic Games in Atlanta, Georgia. They were given a dramatic and emotional start when the cauldron was lit by sporting legend Muhammad Ali. Next to the site of the main competition venues was an open area known as Centennial Olympic Park. The park appeared to be part of the games, but was not actually part of the Olympic security system. In the early hours of July 27, 1996, tragedy struck when a terrorist bomb exploded in the Centennial Olympic Park, resulting in the death of two people and their injury of 110 more. The games did continue on 
and the United States won some memorable gold medals. Like Michael Johnson of the United States became the first man in Olympic history to run and win both the 200 meter and 400 meter. His victory over 200 meter in 19 and 32 hundredths of a second established a new world record. American tennis star Andre Agassi won his first and only gold medal at the 1996 Atlanta Olympic Games. It cemented his place as one of the greatest tennis players of all time. Finally, one of the most epic Olympic moments happened at the 1996 Atlanta Summer Olympic Games. Despite injuring her ankle, Carrie Strug completed her final vault jump to help the United States win the women's team all around gold in the artistic gymnastics. On August 31st, 1997, Princess Diana was killed in a car accident in Paris, France, along with her partner, Dodi Fayed, and their driver, Henry Paul. She was 36 years old when she passed away and left behind her two young sons, William and Harry. She has been remembered as the People's Princess. The end of the 90s provided a lot of fear for people. We all feared Y2K or the year 2000. What was this scare all about? The millennium bug. People were concerned that events related to the formatting and storage of calendar data for the dates in and after the year 2000 would cause problems. Guess what? It didn't. All right, let's follow my boots that are made for walking into the kitchen and find out all about the 1990s prices. The average income in the 1990s was $23,602 a year. Cost of stamps was between 25 and 33 cents. A dozen eggs, cost $1.23. A half a gallon of milk cost $1.40. Ooh, I actually had the same exact bike. And a bike like this in the 90s cost $104.92. Ooh, let's explore the rad inventions of the 1990s. First up, in 1990, the World Wide Web was invented. In 1991, the digital answering machine was invented. Text messaging was actually invented in 1992, but not widely used until much later. DVD players were invented in 1995. Before that, we used those VCRs. Ooh, my Nintendo 64 was invented in 1996. I love it. Finally, Google was actually invented in 1998. So the 90s was really the beginning of the internet age and when people started using the internet to find information. It's like every decade, there were lots of amazing things that happened and lots of tragedies too. Here, let me show you something else that was awesome. There I am in the same dress, 1994, and in 2021. I look the same, don't I? <laughs> okay, the video is over, but I can't seem to get out of the 90s. Can you help me, please? Take care. Peace. Get me out. <laughs>